insert hilarious yet insightful intro here, this is the Midweek Wrap-Up. <laughs> You're right it is. Uh, welcome back to the Midweek Wrap-Up. We're doing all of our usual shows. That'd be Main Event, NXT, and Lucha Underground. We're going to start Main Event. Uh, Xavier Woods was dressed a little different yes, than he normally is. Looking like a trimmed down Biggie Lights. We shall call him Little E. He didn't like that. No, uh, he was not a mini E fan. No. Uh, so we find out that uh, earlier in the day, Xavier Woods' bag had been stolen, but luckily, uh, Big E always carries an extra singlet, and so therefore, Xavier Woods was wearing You know singlet. why Xavier Woods was so uncomfortable? Was that? Because you have to imagine the inside of that singlet was pretty damp. Yeah. I mean, he is a heavy sweater. That's why it's called big. That's why it's big wool. But you you, you got to think he he probably doesn't carry wet singlets around. I don't think that was the one that he had worn the previous night at Raw. You never know. Then again, I, you're right. I I, I could been. I could very well be wrong. But this did give him because the power. Was, it probably was the one he used at Raw because he was probably wearing his clean one. Unless he did laundry. He doesn't strike me as a laundry type. Yeah, you never know. Um, but it does give him the power of the singlet. Yes. Uh, which he, he didn't quite understand yet. They were quickly interrupted by the social outcast. Who happened to have his suitcase with all yeah. his clothes and stuff. Uh, yeah, it, also his, uh, his My Little Pony. Apparently, uh, Xavier Woods is a brony. Um, so, the challenge is thrown down a six-man tag team match. If the New Day wins, they get Xavier Woods' bag back. And Social Outcast is like, all right, that's cool. Um, they did a good match. Yeah. It was, a, it was an, a nice, lengthy six-man tag match to kick off main event. Uh, we, had the, we had a lot of mocking going on between both sides. Uh, and then the... Oh, the best part was the Social Outcasts trying to replicate the New Day's introduction. Yes. Uh, and then they, and then they, they started like dancing, and then Kofi, or what? One of them, one of them. Oh, Heath Slater did like a little hip swivel thing, and then Kofi Kingston knocked him out of the ring, and then he started twerking, and then both Xavier Woods and Biggie came over, and they started twerking, and then they were, then they ran their own their New Day bow train. Yeah. And the Kofi train. The Kofi train, and it, uh, the the Outcast decided no, we're going to show them how to do it, and they go around. Uh, which eventually leads to both uh, Dallas and Axel being dove on. Uh, and then we get towards the end where Xavier Woods gets to go on this awesome hot tag where he's been trying to hit the belly-to-belly -belly suplex the yeah. whole time. Uh, Big E was like, trying to show him how to do it earlier, but he finally hits one on Bo Dallas. He gets to pull the straps uh, down, which just increases his power by 20%. Yes, uh, and... Uh, uh, Heath Slater tries to go for a clothesline or something on him, and he ducks under, and then uh, Big E ends up clobbering him, goes out, he takes care of Axel, Xavier Woods tags in Kofi, and then Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston hit the midnight hour for the win. Uh, that was entertaining, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, watching Xavier Woods play the part of Big E. Uh, so a fun way to start off the main event, we followed up with women's action, Paige versus Summer Rae. Vote for Paige. Uh, always. Uh, this, yeah. is, this is a match we've seen a few times. Yep. Um, so yeah, nothing, nothing really new here. It's always fun to watch Paige just kick the shit out of people. Uh, cause she's good at it. Yeah. She's got those stiff knees that she likes to use. And Summer Rae sells those very well. Uh, and so, uh, Paige ends up, uh, hitting her follow away slam, her, uh, her little nod to Razor, Sack of shit. Her, her, her Razor Ramon shout out, and then hits the Rampage, and Paige picks up the win. We're starting to build towards who the next challenger for Charlotte's Women's Championship is. Yep. Uh, then we finish off main event with a very interesting main event. Uh, Baron Corbin finally taking on someone his own size in Jack, Jack Swagger. Swagger. You say Yak Swagger? Yep. You did. Uh, we had Dolph Ziggler at commentary. I liked Dolph Ziggler's commentary. Yes. He was very into the match. He mm -hmm. he added a lot of character to it, which, you know, Tom is good and King knows what he's doing, but they're not the most charismatic duo. 
So you add who? Dolph Ziggler in there, uh, who who has gone against both of these guys, and he gets to add a lot of input to the match. Yeah, everyone thought it was hysterical when uh, Baron Corbin went to tackle Jack Swagger on the outside. And he Swagger moved out of the way, and Baron Corbin tackled the ring steps instead. Yeah. And the, the commentary people, they all just thought it was funny. Yeah, no, they all, like, busted up laughing, and Dolph's like, are, are the steps okay? <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it, it was fun hearing a, a more in-depth look uh, as to these two uh, competitors in the ring. And Swagger gave Baron Corbin a fucking run for his money, yeah. which was good to see. It's the first time we've seen Baron Corbin actually be really challenged uh, on the main roster, which is fun to watch. Uh, and even yeah, he was he was able to really you know make Baron Corbin kind of step out of his comfort zone because he's used to just destroying small guys. Uh, but eventually, Swagger gets uh, Baron Corbin in the ankle lock. Which he's able to. I almost thought they were going to give it to Swagger. Yes. Because he got him in the ankle lock and like Corbin started going towards the ropes and Swagger actually was able to pull him away from the ropes the first time. Yeah, and then, yeah, so yeah, uh, Baron Corbin really had to work to get the ropes. And so he ends up getting the ropes and the ref is trying to tell Swagger to back off. And the slight distraction from the referee allows uh, Corbin to kind of shove his free foot into the throat of Jack Swagger. Pulls him down throat first into the middle rope, and then hits the end of days, a very good end of days, on Jack Swagger, and Baron Corbin picks up the win. Yeah, so he uses a cheap shot into the throat to beat Swagger, uh, which just goes to show that he's probably not as apt to beat Dolph Ziggler if they keep a technical wrestling match yes. this upcoming Monday. Yeah, and that, that was the whole thing, was that you know, Baron Corbin's trying to prove that he can beat technical wrestlers, because... That is the match that they will have on Monday night. So we'll see how well uh, he fares in a technical match against Dolph Ziggler. Let me move on to NXT where we open up finding out that uh, due to the ankle injury she sustained in her match against Nia Jax, Aww. Bayley is not able to uh, get her rematch against Asuka at TakeOver. So William Regal yeah. has made a triple threat women's match between Alexa Bliss, Carmella, and Nia Jax. Yay, and the winner... Eva Marie. <laughs> I didn't hear that right for a second, but then I, I replayed it in my head and it sounded... I was like, I, I thought he said, yay, Marie. I was like, no, no, he didn't say that. Yeah. I'm glad he didn't say that. The winner gets to go on to NXT TakeOver The End, I believe is what it's being called. Uh, and they get to face... Uh, blah, blah, they get to face Oscar. Oscar for the Women's Championship. Spoiler alert. <laughs> no, not at all. What are you talking about? But our first match of that was a tag team match. Uh, the team of Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa taking on the new arrivals on the tag team scene. That being TM61. That's uh, TM61. Nick Miller and Shane Thorne, formerly known as the Mighty Don't Kneel. TMDK. Uh, a fan. Some, Australia, some good Australian cruiserweights. A fan. Fucking tastic match. Probably, probably match of the midweek. I'd say absolutely. Uh, both teams just amazing chemistry, not only as tag teams but against each other. I have never seen the Mighty Don't Kneel actually wrestle before, uh, so this was a treat for me because I'm already big fans of Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. So as you them, should be. So seeing them have a really well uh, adapted tag team to face. Like, these guys have so much history together that they are a well-oiled machine. And yeah. so to see them go against two guys you wouldn't necessarily say would make a good tag team in Gargano and Ciampa, just fantastic work on both sides yeah. of this match. Uh, innovative offense, a lot of great technical stuff. Uh, Johnny Gargano dove onto Nick Miller on the outside and almost overshot him. Yeah, almost completely uh, he like he got him with like his thigh and his whole upper half of the body hit the ramp. Uh, it was a pretty gnarly. Uh, it was enough to keep him out of the ring long enough though for them to score the uh, running knee super kick combo. Yeah, uh, it, which well, is just and, it's just such a violent looking. Well, on, on top of that, to set that up, Champa goes for a knee in the corner and flips over the top rope. And I was like, wait, did he tag Johnny? And they're like, no, 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 he's got to get back in and then tag Johnny. So they were like, 
they were just full of fire in this. They were just ready to go. The, yeah, then Shane Thorne ends up getting hit with the super kick, running the combo, and Tommaso Ciampa and Jerry yeah. Gargano. They, they, had a, they had a team that went their speed, so, you know, they had to amp it up. Yes. Uh, because Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa uh, really rival uh, Dash and Dawson as far as being, like, one of the smallest teams on the uh, NXT roster. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so a lot of Ciampa and Gargano's uh, strategy revolves around the fact that they can both move extremely quickly. Yeah. And so they had somebody who's just as adept at moving so fast with TM61. Yeah. Uh, so they really had to amp their game up, and that caused a couple... Uh, Moves that might have been a little overzealous. Yeah, just a little bit. And it was cool they gave a shout out during the match to Gargano and Ciampa, mentioning that they are two of the entrants in the Cruiserweight Classic. Oh, yeah. That's which is coming up. Which is coming up very soon. A few um, weeks. Yeah. Uh, so then we ha we actually had Bailey address the fact that she's, she's really upset that she's not able to get her championship back, but she understands why uh, William Regal is doing so. Uh, so she'll just have to work it, you know, work, work it out, and eventually get her shot. Nia Jax interrupts. She starts acting like a bitch. Carmella comes in. She backs up Bailey, and then Alexa Bliss uh, hears Nia Jax saying that she's gonna beat up Carmella and Alexa. And Alexa's like, "You talking shit?" And Nia's like, "You ain't even worth the time." She walks away. Get a little catty here and there. Alexa walks away, uh, and then uh, Carmella makes sure that Bailey is okay. Yeah. Kudos to Regal for, uh, you know, being the decision, the guy, being the one authority figure that says, oh, well, you're hurt, I'm not going to let you wrestle. Yeah. Versus, like, how many times do you have, like, on the main roster and storylines where a wrestler will purposely attack another wrestler so they're hurt going into a match? Yeah. And, like, no matter who's the authority figure on the main roster, they're like, yeah, he's fine. <laughs> he just got fucking smashed between 300-pound bricks in the backstage by Big Show. Go ahead, fight. Go to the ring and fight Big Show now. Gee, you're you're not you're not referencing anything specific, are you? <laughs> I don't know. I just picked like I'm I I'm just sure the first random. Thing I'm that sure came to this head. scenario that you just made has happened at least once in the history or the the career of the Big Show. God knows how many he smashed somebody had. backstage with three hundred pound bricks. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want to see a three hundred pound brick. <laughs> it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be a giant. That's a man sized brick. Uh, That's big show shit bricks. Gross. Uh, we had the video package. Uh, we, there was a, a man in a luchador mask watching uh, some uh, seemed like old luchador lucha tapes. It was himself. He was, was watching it? himself. Oh. Uh, so, uh, uh, watching what he did uh, as a mask wrestler, as he uh, proceeded to take his mask off, we never actually saw his face, but we know that uh, Andrade Cien Almas is coming soon. Uh, so, a, yeah, a new, new uh, high-flying luchador character is making his way to NXT uh, in the near future. Yeah, I'm going to make a quick note on that once this... Uh Page loads up on here. Uh, yeah, da, 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 he's, curr he's currently watching the video. Uh, if you go to uh, WWE's YouTube page, I'm sure it's yeah. up there. Uh, he's former luchador uh, La Sombra. Oh, right, right, right. He got okay. signed, uh, and the mask coming off. is It's kind of a cool uh, shout-out to the way his career winded down in Mexico right as he was getting signed because he lost his mask to oh. Atlantis All uh, right. right around the same time he got signed. So that's cool. kind of like saying, like, hey, now I don't have my mask. So it's and a, I'm it's starting a, a new chapter. It's a cool transition into, the, uh, into what he's going to do next. Yeah. I like it. Uh, we had Austin Aries come out and talk about how the, the term being the best gets thrown around in professional sports a lot. Everyone wants to be the best, but... You know, you never realize, you call yourself the best, but there's always going to be someone that comes along that's better than you. Uh, which is why he's always settled for being great. Yeah. Uh, and he plans on being great, uh, and he's 
You know, he he feels like he keeps being overshadowed, and we get the crowd start chanting Nakamura. Yeah, which he re- he kind of slightly made that reference because uh, him and Nakamura had their NXT debut matches at the same card. Right. Uh, and Nakamura's was way more hyped up than the yes. arrival of Austin Aries. Yeah, and so he t- he took offense to that, but this brings Nakamura out, and yeah, well, first he he wanted to make the claim because he's like. I'm not going to be overshadowed because I'm challenging whoever wins the championship match right. at TakeOver. Right, yeah he, yeah. he was immediately throwing himself into that championship. Which, I mean, that's a good way to get yourself noticed is to go after the belt. Absolutely. Uh, but then Nakamura's like, no, no, no. The, ch- the NXT championship is not going with greatness. It's going with the king of strong style. And th- this was such a great promo because... He like he starts saying I don't, I don't remember what he's what he started his promo with. Well, he started speaking in Japanese. Oh, that's, he's like, oh, that's right. You you don't under, you don't understand Japanese. And Austin's like, I don't understand you. He goes, Me too. <laughs> Which great little banter back and forth. Uh, so yeah. So when Nakamura says that the championship's coming with him, uh, it it obviously uh, sparked a little idea in Mr. William Regal, who comes out and makes the match for NXT Takeover. Austin Aries versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. That's going to be a fan fucking tastic. I think they just gave us the show stealer. I think so. Uh, American Alpha say that no matter what the revival brings to NXT Takeover, they are, they will be ready, willing, and gable. They know exactly what the revival is bringing to a match because they beat them before. Yeah. They faced them so many times that. This match is going to be no different, and they will remain the tag team champions. They feel as if they are the Revival's kryptonite. Yes. Uh, we had no way Jose taking on uh, a little Ascension-looking jobber dude with an Abraham Lincoln beard named Jonathan Mordigan. Huh. All right. He, he, he looked like he'd be a, a mini-victor. He looked like... A small dude who got his ass handed to him by No Way yeah, Jose. He did. Uh, yeah, No Way Jose winning with his uh, his half, half Nelson slam. Uh, and then going up and dancing with uh, Tom Phillips and uh, Corey Graves. Yes. Because Corey Graves is such a dancey guy. He got into it. Yeah, because he knows how to fu- have fun. Don't doubt his fun having abilities. Yeah. He knows all about what's hip and the fun stuff. Yeah. He knows how to hop on the good foot and do the bad thing. Right. Then our main event was the Triple Threat Women's ch- women's Number One Contendership match. Uh, this was... I liked this match. Uh, I liked seeing... Because this was an interesting combination of women from the NXT roster. Uh, the beginning was fun. Alexa Bliss immediately getting herself out. Yeah. And I liked watching Carmella try and scrap her way around Nia Jax. Uh, I thought she did a really good job of... Uh, playing, you know, obviously she didn't have, she had the size disadvantage, and she kind of played that up, uh, trying to use her quickness. Nia Jax obviously using her strength, and then when Alexa Bliss got back in, we had some fun kind of interchangeable moments. Yeah, like the first time that she tried to like get into the match, she climbed up to the top <laughs> rope so while Nia Jax was looking the other way, and Nia Jax turned around and she likes like. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get down. And she got down, and she's in the back. She gets down to the ground. She's like, "No, I'm just stretching." Yeah. Uh, Don't so, mind me. You know, Naya, obviously the most dominant out of out of the three of these women. Uh, she has a, you know, at one point we actually get Carmella and Alexa trying to work together, going for a double suplex, and Naya ends up getting the double suplex on them. Um, but yeah, it was just I, I like. It her- was one of the best. Uh, forms I've seen on a one person suplexing two people. Yeah, usually you just kind of see two people just flip over. That's all you really get. But there was there was a good there was a yeah. good there was a good suplex stall for a second. Well, I like because like a lot of times you see it and like their legs get tangled and they fall on top of each other. Right. Because it's hard to like not waver around in the air. Because, I mean, the suplex, you're picking somebody up and you're, you know, the stability comes from holding them with your other hand. Yeah. So when one person's doing two suplexes, the bodies can wiggle around. Yeah. And the, the, these, they just went straight up and over and made it for a really crisp, 
clean looking and it's, souffle. Uh, it, it also really. Buble souffle. Michael Buble was not there. I didn't say Buble. What did you say? I said Duble. Oh, I, said, I thought you said Buble. Buble souffle. Buble de Duble souffle. Buble souffle. The, the, the double who play. Anyway, uh, no, I told no. An another thing that I, that I attribute to that that double suplex is <sighs> the size differential between Carmella and Alexa Bliss. Yeah. Because Alexa Bliss is super short, and she's I mean she's a good six inches shorter than Carmella. Yeah. So the fact that she was able to get such good form off of two very differently sized women was awesome. No, it was a godsend that Nia Jax reversed it because. If they would have actually tried to double suplex Nia Jax, they would have just tipped over. <laughs> I, I kind of want that to happen. I think Carmella that, would have been up in the air. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. Uh, but eventually, uh, Alexa Bliss ends up getting taken out, and we're, we're just... she's She gets put in the triangle choke by Carmella. Uh, before she's able to tap out, Nia Jax actually pulls her out of the ring and deposits her to the outside, and she's out for the rest of the match. Yeah. Uh, we just get Nia versus Carmella, and we uh, once again, like we did at the beginning, we get a lot of good uh, work from Carmella trying to use, uh, you know, her quickness and just trying to do anything she can to take Nia down, and then Nia ends up uh, catching her and then just kind of throwing her down. I wish it was more of a spine buster. Well, it was that I feel that her that was supposed to be her spine buster move. Carmella actually landed on her feet. Oh, did she before she before she bumped? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. The, it was it, it looked very. Or she landed on one foot at least. Yeah, it, it was it was a very weird end. Uh, and then Nia hits the big the big leg drop and picks up the win. And then we go off the air. Uh, Asuka comes out and stares at her from the stage, and you know she gives her a little smile. Then, then she's like, no, I'm really going to fuck with her. And actually walks down to the ring and gets in Nia's face. And Nia actually says, if you ever step up to me like this again, I will drop you where you stand. So, And those are usually uh, intimidating words when they come from somebody the size of Nia Jax. She's a, she's but a I girl. feel like Asuka doesn't get intimidated. Asuka don't give no fucks. Asuka is scary. Moving on to Lucha Underground, we actually started with some scary, where we had uh, Pentagon Jr. Uh, saying that he was ready to return the, to return to the temple oh. and take on Matanza, oh, get his shit. revenge. And Vampiro's like, no, you you need to prove to me that you are. Uh, and you know, Vampiro, they they did. I'm guessing it's like Krav Maga, which is what uh, Vampiro specializes in. Uh, so they they like do a little exchange, and Pentagon, holy crap! That they took out the referee. Um, uh, Pentagon actually kind of gets the upper hand on Vampiro and says, you know, and, you know, he's like, he's like, I, ha I have no fear. You need to let me go back. And Vampiro's like, I, I, I feel like, you know, you're on the right path, but there's still something you need to learn. So you're not ready yet. So I guess in a way he kind of agrees, okay, we'll wait just a little bit longer. Yeah. It's one of those, uh, moments where... Okay, you know, Pentagon got so fucked up during his match with Matanza, and he's like, yeah, let me go back in, I have no fear. And it's kind of one of those moments where you can almost feel like there's some hesitation because Vampiro's like, well, in this scenario, you going back because you have no fear versus being completely healed up mm -hmm. would definitely be more of a hindrance than a help because... Yeah. You know, if you go in not at 100%, especially if the first thing you plan on doing is going after Matanza, you're just going to end up in worse condition. Exactly. You're going to be permanently uh, in that Professor X wheelchair. <laughs> Our first match was uh, Joey Ryan taking on the now famous Mascarita Sagrada. This was a good comedy match. So, so much funny in this match. Uh, Joey, you know, uh, starting right off the bat by you know, dropping his... Lollipop and his tight saying he was going to save it for later. Uh, he immediately, off the bat, went for heel points by booting Sagrado while Famous B was trying to introduce yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, and then they got a good pop because they did like the whole uh, Joey was trying to gorilla press him, but he wasn't strong enough. 
So he did like a tiny body slam. Yeah. Uh, but then Masquerade Sagrada responded by picking Joy Ryan up in a fireman's carry. Uh, which, which was impressive. <laughs> yeah, no, Sagrada's a strong yeah, he guy is. for his size. Uh, not that small people can't be strong. Uh, but the, the part, I just laughed so hard at the end of this match because Joy Ryan hits. The smallest tornado DDT uh, but before, I've ever seen. Before that, Masquerita tries to kick Joy Ryan in the dick and yes. hurts his foot instead because yeah. it's the King of Dong style. Uh, but yeah, it's then a, it's he throw out. It's like a shout out to his indie gimmick. <laughs> but yeah, then uh, yeah, you follow it up with the second rope tornado DDT. Uh, Joey Ryan picking up the win over Masquerita Sagrada. Uh, we get a couple of uh, little video packages. Uh, we get a little insight into Taya uh, uh, saying uh, that you know, do you, you when you look in the mirror, do you see do you see something you're disappointed disappointed? Do you see something that you don't necessarily like? Well, I don't. It was uh, Taya. Perfection has arrived. Lucha Underground. Uh, those uh, those good fellas uh, or those uh, Reservoir Dog Luchadors get their asses kicked a lot. Yeah. Um, we also had uh, King Cuerno uh, talking to what, what... This I thought was the most interesting backstage segment. Uh, uh, what, what originally seemed like it was himself or he was sending a message to someone. Uh, he talked about how, you know, you, you, sat, you, sat on your, you sat on your throne for so long, you thought you were the king of the jungle, but you didn't realize whose jungle you had inhabited. And then you, came, then you came to find out who the real king of the jungle was. He gets up, and he's in, he's in his trophy room. He's got you know the, all the different, uh, you know, the heads up on the mantle and horns. Which all still make noises when the camera shows up. Yes. Uh, but, we find, but we see that in the corner, he does in fact have Mil Muertes in a glass case. Yeah, it's like he took the, one of the, ca the casket he was put in and put like a glass... Wall on yeah, it. yeah. So to, so you know he can look and admire his trophy. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Mil Mortes is officially in the trophy room of one King Cuerno. Uh and then we had the Gift of the Gods Championship match. The new champion Chavo defending against the guy who helped him win, the man they call Cage. Uh, the Machine Cage. Uh, Wolverine. Such a good nickname. Um, Cage beat Chavo's ass for a good portion of this match. But what surprised me is, like, Chavo came up with a few spots that actually started getting the crowd behind him a little bit. He, he's a Guerrero, so when he comes up with clever stuff, he's gonna get that real, like, oh, okay, that was cool, and then he, no but then again, he's a Guerrero, and he knows how to piss people off, too. Yeah. Um, uh, and he taught him well. But, it, yeah, it was, one of the, it was just one of those things where it's like, Chavo would like pull off something kind of unique or cool and the crowd would pop for him. But then Cage would do like some insane, like the one where he grabbed him like he's going to suplex him, but then he just flipped him and power yeah. bombed him. Oh, and the man. crowd's like, oh yeah, Cage is fucking <laughs> We're awesome. really like Cage. Uh, eventually, Chavo, Chavo hits everything he possibly can. He hits the frog splash and Cage kicks out. He goes for the three amigos and he only hits two. And on the third one, uh, Cage just says, you can fuck right off, and uh, sets him up for what we think is going to be the jackhammer, yeah. turns into a pile driver, and Cage is the new Gift of the Gods champion. Yeah, I think he's named it the Lucha Killer. Yes, uh, the, the Lucha Destroyer. The Lucha Destroyer. Uh, and he officially cashes in his Gift of the Gods championship and wants to challenge Matanza next week for the oh, Lucha Underground yeah. Championship. Big boys. Yeah. So, Two very athletically gifted large individuals. Yes. Uh, we also know that our main event is supposed to be uh, Dragon Azteca Jr., Rey Mysterio Jr., and Prince Puma defending their trios championships against Jack Evans, PJ Black, and Phoenix. Team Flippidoo versus the Flippy Zoo. But we go, we go to the back and we see Taya leading both PJ and Jack through the locker room. She's uh, like, we got a, me and Johnny, we got a present for you. And they go in and they see Phoenix on the ground and they're like, yeah, our partner, knock the fuck out. Yeah, thanks, great, <laughs> fucking present. Great. You stupid bitch. <laughs> now it's just the two of us. But then we find out that Johnny Mundo is officially replacing Phoenix in said trio. Because uh, apparently they have that kind of authority. Well, D Dario 
it, it doesn't take a lot to be like, hey, Dario, we think this is a good idea. And Dario's like, okay, if you can pull it off, do it. Uh, kind of like last week, he's, he told Cage, he's like, if you can beat the hell out of Chavo and take your medallion back, you can be in the Gift of the Gods match. Uh, so, yeah, uh, then, then we get all three of them playing air guitar. Yeah. With actual, like, guitar sounds. They're, they have now become the 3MB of I'm, Lucha Underground. I'm sticking to the Bill and Ted. They are, they are the Bill and Ted of Lucha Underground. But there's three of them. I don't give a shit. They are the Wild Stallions. Uh, we also... That's giving them too much credit. Yeah. Um, we also had uh, Cortez Castro walk in on Joey Ryan searching through... In Officer Reyes. Off Officer Reyes... Uh, Walks in on, uh, I don't even know what Joey Ryan's like. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Officer Ryan, uh, searching through Dario Cueto's office, look, he's like, hey, you don't have anything, I need evidence. You know, you're, you're not helping in any way. Like, I'm want. almost looking as bad as you. <laughs> so, they start, they start looking through and they're, you know, they're, they're trying to find something that they can take back to their captain. They end up finding a drawer full of money. Yeah. And, and, and Joey's like, oh, found it. And Castro's like, that's, that's not proof. He goes, no, but it's guaranteed we're getting bonuses. <laughs> so they start, they start taking a, f a few bills out of the... Uh, well, Joey is trying to stuff his pockets. Yeah. Uh, uh, they get interrupted, though. Yeah. Uh, the lights flip on. And we see that it's Mr. Cisco. Which is kind of weird. Yeah, why, why was he going into Dario's... Like, did he just walk by and be like, what the hell's Dario doing in here? Oh, it's not Dario. <laughs> yeah, it is weird, though, because like I felt like, you know, the crew kind of started severing all their ties in the temple and became their own thing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's, like... It's not like he would, like, be going to, like, hang out with Dario and Cueto. Yeah. Or, and then he's like, oh, well, then I'm going to fucking snitch on you. Because apparently, <laughs> Mr. Cisco's a fucking snitch. <laughs> First, <laughs> Reyes is like, oh, Joey lost a contact. I'm trying to help him find it. And Joey's like, <laughs> he's like holding his eye trying to, anyway. Yeah, he's like, no, I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk to, I'm going to go talk to Dario. And uh, they end up arresting Mr. Cisco. So Cisco now knows. Yeah, they arrested Francisco. Yeah, Francisco... Something, something, something. Uh, so now Cisco knows that uh, Cortez Castro is Officer Reyes, uh, yeah. and knows that there's that they are uh, undercover cops in the temple. Let's just hope he doesn't make bail. <laughs> oh my god! Oh no! Crew joke. <laughs> A little too, bit too soon. <laughs> Rest in peace, bail. Oh man! Or is he? Dun dun dun! Moving on, we had the trios championship match. Uh, champions come out first. Uh, Melissa Santos uh, introduces the challengers, but Taya then lets the crowd know that Phoenix will be replaced by Johnny Mundo. Yeah, uh, and this completing the trifecta of douchebaggery. Yes, uh, this was a crazy match. All this this is one of those matches where you can't. So you need to see it to understand yeah. all of the insanity that went into this match. Lots of flips, lots yes. of jumps, lots of fast. Yes. Uh, and we, I, I thought, you know, right in the middle of it, we had this, the referee gets pulled out and we have a dick kicking party from, uh, from yes. Mundo Evans and Black kicking all of Team Flippy Doo in the dick. It's the, the ding ding kick party. It's, it's it's just it's not right. They they like any chance they got, they were kicking somebody in the dick. Uh, and we even get you know we get a pin afterwards, and then they end up kicking out. And I'm like, okay, here yeah, we go. Yeah, like Justin Gabriel was going for some sort of like power bomb or suplex type move. And when he had Puma bent over, like, Jack Evans ran and kicked him in the balls. Yeah. And then he hit the move, and then he kicked out. And everyone's like, oh, yeah. thank you so, for the kick out. Yeah, ba so Babyface is start, uh, start making a comeback. Uh, we have, um, we're, le we're left at one point with Dragon Azteca Jr. and Johnny Mundo in the ring. Uh, Azteca Jr. goes for a sunset flip, 
And before the referee can go down to count uh, for the for the pin that he has Johnny Mundo in, Taya starts to get in the ring with a chair. And the ref's like, oh, no, 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 you, you got to get out of here. You, He's you like, A, you're not in the match. B, you have a chair. Yeah. And but she's like, but I, it's but I bleh, distracting the referee, allowing Jack Evans to come in the other side of the chair and whack Dragon Azteca in the back of the head. He then rolls Johnny Mundo and Dragon Azteca back over. Referee turns around. One, two, three, and Team Bill and Ted are the new trios champions. Yes. So we had two championship uh, changes. And now we're Wolverine like, got gold, and so did the Perseus douche trio that Lucha Underground could put together. We'll have to come up with a really good trio's name for them. Um, but yeah, I'm so gonna say douchey fucktards. I don't feel like you put enough creativity into that. Um, so now we have uh, you know not only did he just win championship gold, but uh, Cage is looking to win the Lucha Underground Championship next week. We're getting closer and closer to it. Ultima Lucha. Uh, Much think, closer. It's three think, or four episodes left. Yeah, the, the, I, I think we're only two. This was episode eighteen, so I think we're I think we're about two weeks away from uh, the beginning of the three week extravaganza that is Ultima Lucha. Ultima Lucha. But that is it for the midweek wrap up. It is. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, Chris. Um, also, uh, uh, share the video with your friends or your enemies if you didn't like it. Uh, share it with your weird aunt that has one too many cats. Uh, let us know down in the comments what your favorite part of the midweek shows was. Uh, are you excited for the new debut on NXT? Uh, are you excited for Ultima Lucha coming closer for Lucha Underground. Let Who's gonna know. win between Cage and Matanza? Yeah, do you think do you think Cage is gonna Don't win? look online and spoil it though. Yeah, because like, he already did that. I uh, you know what I haven't got this far yet. Well I mean I I've sort of. Yeah, you have. Um, Shush. <laughs> let us know what you're excited for. Uh, also uh, if you, uh, we probably should tell you this first, but if you don't want to watch us, you can listen to us podcast style. That's down in the links with all of our social media stuff. Yeah, that's a heads up in case you don't want to see us tomorrow on the SmackDown Rundown. Yes, but for those of you that do want to watch us, you can check out that playlist where you get what? all of the videos, all it's combined. It's always just there, it's hovering there. over me. It's, like it's, it's watching you. Oh, God. I think it has a crush on you. Uh, if you check up there, we have the Extreme Rules review, we have our Raw review, we have this midweek wrap-up. Coming up next, we have SmackDown Rundown, and after that, we will be having indie news with a whole lot of results. So look forward to that. But once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. You should name it Miz. Fuck the Miz. Hey, don't talk to playlists like that. Not that, the Miz. That's not, you're not the Miz. You deserve better than that. You're Steve. Sorry, Steve. <laughs>